one. Hello everyone, welcome to this global GEG broadcast. We'll be making a start shortly, and while we're waiting for everyone to arrive, why not head into the chat, let us know who you are, where you're from, your Twitter handle, and if you've got any questions that you'd like us to answer during the course of this evening, let us know there as well. Also, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button to make sure you stay up to date with all of the events being organised by us at Global GEG. We'll be making a start really soon. Thanks for joining us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the TweetDeck panel. Um, we are going to get started with some introductions. My name is Becky Calling. I'm an instructional coach in New Hall, California, which is in the Santa Clarita Valley. You can follow me on Twitter at Tech with Becky. And I'm also one of the GEG leaders and the co-leaders of GEG SoCal. Let's go on and we'll go in order with Danessa. Hi guys, I'm Danessa Menji. I teach in Oakdale, California. Um, I'm also a part of uh, GEG NorCal, woo -woo, co leader with Stephanie, who's on. Hey, hey Stephanie. Um, you can also follow me at Edutech Ness on Twitter. And I'm Sean Scanlon. I'm the director of, um, now a new role, again, director of curriculum and instruction at Marion Catholic High School, uh, Chicago Heights. Uh, and I'm uh, at Polo Nerd on Twitter. And um, that's where you usually find me, hanging out there and using TweetDeck. Hey, everybody. My name is Derek Larson. I am a library media coordinator in St. George, Utah, part of Washington County School District. I have been an intermediate school, but this next year I'll be moving to a middle school. So what a great time to change, change jobs, right, in the midst of all this. You can find me online at, at Lars3EB. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ben Moore, and you can find me on uh, Twitter at TrainingWithBM. Uh, I'm an associate teacher, lettings and health and safety coordinator for two secondary academies here in Essex in the UK. And I'm a GEG uh, UK and a global GEG co-leader. So you can find me on Twitter. Hello, everyone. My name is Chanel Johnson and I am in Atlanta, Georgia. I am a science specialist in a school district in Atlanta, Georgia, and you can follow me on Twitter at DC STEMtastic. Thanks for coming. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy Mini Coatsy. I'm an instructional technology coach in Beverly Hills, California, at Beverly Hills High School. On the Twitters, I am at Coffee Nancy. Hi, everyone. My name is Corey Hurst. Uh, I am currently in France, but I normally live in Spain. Uh, I work for iAcademy Middle East, which is a fully online school based in Dubai. And I am a social studies, middle school social studies, lower school and middle school social studies teacher, as well as lead teacher. So it's great to have all of you here. Hi everyone, I'm Janet Avery. I'm the Director of Curriculum in Jerome, Idaho. I'm also moderator of Idaho Ed Chat, which is a state Twitter chat for Idaho educators and anyone else. And I can be found on Twitter at Avery Teach. All right, so we're gonna get started with talking all things TweetDeck. We have set questions ready to go. And you're going to hear from everybody on the panel today. But if you have questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. We'll either stop throughout to answer the questions or I will, um, I'll, I'll let our panel know what your questions are and we'll get to them right then and there. So our first, all right, so we're going to get started with talking about, you know what, I have somebody who's set questions ready to go. We do. We're going to hear from everybody on the panel today. But if you have questions, feel free to them in the chat. We'll either stop throughout to answer the question. All right, there we go. <laughs> um, we're going to keep going. Sorry about that. So the first question that we have is, what is TweetDeck? And we're actually going to be starting with Janet, and I'm going to share your screen. So actually, I think uh, Derek is going to give some background. This is what TweetDeck is and looks like. And then I'm going to let Derek give some background. Then I'm going to get another. You are correct. 
Perfect. Hey, so TweetDeck was 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 originally an application created by Ian Dodsworth, who was a British computer programmer. That's something that was new to me. I wasn't aware that TweetDeck was a was a program developed over in England. But in it first was released July fourth, two thousand eight, um, as an independent Twitter client application. Uh, about a year later, June, on June nineteenth, the iPhone version was released. A year later, after that, on, in May of twenty ten, the iPad version was released. And finally, October of 2010, there was an Android version released. Well, Twitter realized the potential that TweetDeck had and actually acquired it for 40 million, million US dollars or 25 million pounds back on May 25th, 2011. So they felt really in, uh, need, like they need to have this as part of their suite. Um, and on July 25th, 2013, they suspended all mobile versions of Twitter of TweetDeck, basically making it only uh, a desktop application that you had to be logged in and using it online. You were no longer able to have a separate application. So that's kind of where we're at with it now. And they've made a, a few other minor changes. Whenever Twitter Twitter tweaks their APIs, it does affect into TweetDeck as well. But that's some of the background history of where TweetDeck came from. So I find it very funny. Someone just said they took a picture of my screen and said, this is why tweet that click here but for me. Um, <laughs> tweet deck takes that fire hose that is fire hydrant and, and attaches nice little garden hoses to it. So that, so all of these columns, even though they might look scary, those are all just separate little garden hoses that I use to sprinkle my learning with. Perfect. All right. So our first question, how do you use TweetDeck? And we're going to start with Ben. And really quick, actually, Ben, before we get started, panelists, if you're not sharing, would you go on mute just so that way we don't get extra sound? And then I will stop sharing there. So Ben, how do you use TweetDeck? Thanks, Becky. So uh, I use TweetDeck quite a lot. And, and for anyone that uh, has been to any of the global GEG events, uh, you probably would have seen lots of retweets and comments and likes and all your posts. And and uh, that's, that's me in the background. Um, so I use TweetDeck quite a lot to promote the global gig stuff we're doing so boot camps uh you know the other cool events we're doing like today so um i sit in the background and i i like all your stuff or retweet follow you all back and um, so i already use it for you know big events i use you know the normal twitter for my personal account um but when i'm doing events i like to have my, my personal account on tweet deck alongside the global gg uh, and some of the other accounts that I have just so I can interact with people along the way. And it's great to use with uh, with my school as well, my school district. Um, so I use I use it again for the same reason, retweet when we do events. So we had a, a virtual summer event today and I was retweeting all of all of the content that the attendees were putting in. It's just a great way to you know, interact with lots of people um, all from one user interface, all on one easy to see screen rather than flicking between a accounts on the normal twitter so i i love using it for you know for the big events rather than uh, everyday use but i'm sure the other people use it for different things as well so i'll pass over to the next uh, next person to see how they use it janet so i use it to um interact with conferences you know we um there, there are so many conferences that go on around the country and travel budgets are not real huge in Idaho. I don't know about other places, but um, that way I can actually attend a conference without actually having to leave my office um, or my house, depending on um, where I am at the time. I also use it to moderate Idaho Ed Chat and interact with other chats because it helps me just focus in on that, on that chat. Awesome. Let's pass it on to Corey. Okay. The, this is uh, something that's already been covered and will be covered uh, continuously through the night. But what I really like about it is, is switching between the accounts, but not just switching between the accounts uh, like you normally can, but um, seamlessly really and on the same screen. So for example, uh, you have your personal account, you have your teacher account. Um, 
I've helped moderate social media for a conference before, keeping it all on there, much like Ben mentioned already, um, and being able to um, switch between those very quickly and monitor all of the hashtags as well as the people that you want to follow um, uh, pretty easily. Awesome. And Danessa? Um, yeah, I'm with everyone else. TweetDeck allows me to collaborate with individuals. I can set up the like chats I follow, focus in. I can slow the chat down, which we'll talk about later. Um, but I also use it for my class. Um, my classroom, you know, with uh, keeping privacy private, obviously. Um, they can use our class Twitter and they can share their work. They can share their thoughts. Um, and it you know, globally closes the circle for them. All right, and Nancy. So all of the above, I love using TweetDeck at conferences. I like being able to switch between different accounts because um, I have a podcast and I have my teacher coach account. And so I like to be able to do that. Um, and I saw there was some conversation in the YouTube chat also about Twitter lists. I like it um to follow a hashtag or to follow twitter lists and i like the or feature too so that you can follow if people a lot of times if you've been to a conference you know there people are like well is the hashtag 2020 or is it just 20 they have, don't have the full year so then you can put in that or and say well if they do the conference name 2020 or they just do the conference name 20 all of those tweets will come in and I don't have to keep switching back and forth and I can reply or like or interact with those. Um, and I definitely have a global gag column in my tweet deck. Yay, awesome. Uh, and last but not least, Chanel. Of course, um, the same as everyone else. But another thing I would like to add, it helps me to be in multiple chats at once. You know, sometimes you Overcommit. Yes, I'll be in that Twitter chat and that one and that one. And your heart's in the right place. And tweet that helps me to grant that commitment by following those hashtags, getting in there, sending my tweets and whatnot. And I'm also in a very large district. So following. So I have a hashtag that I ask teachers to tweet out when they're tweeting about what's going on in their classroom. So it keeps me abreast on what they're tweeting. Perfect. We're going to go on to our second question, which is, how has TweetDeck enhanced the Twitter experience? We're going to start, Chanel, we're going to start with you again here. Cool. Of course. Um, again, it keeps me in the know. I follow specific hashtags and it can keep up and I can keep up with people in all in one place. And another thing I love when I'm in Twitter chats, I can schedule my tweets to go out. So if I'm the one leading the chat, I can schedule them to go out and then engage with people because it's difficult to do them both, be the one moderating the chat and engaging with people. So tweet that is my Twitter manager. Perfect. I like that wording that your Twitter manager. Uh, Janet, we're going to go to you next. Oh, you know what, Janet, you're on mute. Darn it. <laughs> like Nancy said <laughs> a few minutes ago, it really enhances because I can create lists in Twitter and then um, like I can focus women in, in education um, le who are leaders. And so I have a list of all of those ed women educational leaders so I can follow them. Um, I have one, I, I run our district Twitter account. And so I also have one that's just a list of all of the teachers in our district. So I can go, I can make sure to um, retweet what they're saying or be able to share what they're doing in their classrooms. So I don't miss anyone that way. It just really helps me um, follow specific groups of people. Perfect. And Corey. Yeah, so I, I like it a lot for the for the aspect of following the chats, as as people have mentioned, and uh, I find chats to be on on without TweetDeck to be a little bit um, 
uh, overwhelming. Uh, it's it's a little bit hard to follow everybody's responses and all of the questions. And this really keeps it all in one co column together. Assuming that everybody's using the proper hashtags, they all appear in that one column. And it really allows me to, uh, to keep it better organized and make sure that I don't miss anything. Perfect. And then Nancy, we're gonna pass it to you. Okay, unmuted. Um, so like everybody else, um, we were talking before and um, like Chanel would say, oh yes, well, I'm in this Twitter chat and that Twitter chat. So it helps me at least have the illusion that I'm organized. I like to think that I'm organized and this helps me um, just kind of keep track. I like having all the different columns. I like being able to switch it up quickly if I need to. And um, so I feel like in the end that saves me a lot of time because I'm not going through and looking for things. It's all right there. Perfect. And then we, we got a question in here from, I want to say it was from Robin saying, um, all right, I'm going to ask and I'm going to show it. Oh, I might be showing it at the same time as Stacy. Sorry about that, Stacy. If you want to pop up Robin's question, she wants us to show TweetDeck. So we're going to go that route and Janet's going to actually walk us through TweetDeck and then we'll keep going with our questions. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, so this is TweetDeck. It's just tweetdeck.twitter.com. If you Google TweetDeck, you can get there as well. And then each of these items here, you'll see kind of a, these are all just columns that are in the, in the, in the deck. Okay. So the, at, up here, there is a hashtag. So I got that by actually clicking this search button, which is right underneath the um, writing quill. If I click search, then I can actually search for a hashtag. And you'll see I have some that are already there that are recent, but if I search hashtag edu Twitter, then it makes a new column right here at the end. And so then any tweet that has that hashtag in it will show up in that column. So if I wanted to tweet something, I just click the quill, same, same icons as in Twitter itself. Um, the, and you can actually add any sort of column just by clicking this add column box right here. And then it gives you some choices. You can add your home. That's just your Twitter stream, your users. So you can see just your tweets. Um, you can also add a, just a, a column for just a specific person. You can add a column for your mentions, your notifications, and then your messages also, or just your likes. So that lots of different ways. And I did that again, just by clicking this plus sign where it says add a column. You can add multiple accounts as well. So when I click out here, you'll see I have my Avery Teach account and my Jerome School District account. So I can tweet from either one of those. You can also um, remove, let me see, you can grab Grab a column and move it around. It's going to take a minute because I'm moving too fast. I'm going to grab this column and it's being very, there we go. And it's moving so I can move columns. So I can like move the global GEG column and it's not, there we go by my notifications. So as I'm seeing things there, what are some other things you, and, and to just to tweet, you just click this and start typing. You know, um, I was just going to throw out there as you were moving them, the biggest game changer for me was the fact that you can move them on the left in that column, those little icons, uh, you can move them up and down and that'll move them in that order too. 
Yes. And that was the biggest game changer because they're so much easier to move that way. Thank you. I just learned something new. Look there at that. There you go. That so was like the aha list. moment. <laughs> Woohoo! Look at that. How much easier that is. <laughs> and there's no lag even. I, I learned that when I had 14 columns open and I was trying to move something. <laughs> yeah, I might have a few too. <laughs> <laughs> I think as educators, we all have a few. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, you know it's, it's so important it, to point out, though, oh. that even if you have a lot, like if, if people are watching this and they're getting kind of worried because we have, there might be a lot there, you don't have to start with a lot. Start with one or two no. or three, and as you feel comfortable, yes. you're going to add more and more. I mean, those of us that are on this panel, we we maybe would be called power users of TweetDeck because we use it so frequently. So right. what we use is not what a beginner should try to do. Start with two or three or four. And as you feel comfortable, add more and more as you get going in. But there's no there's no need saying you have to have 15, 20, 30 columns. That's that's up to every personal, every individual user. Absolutely. Correct. Thanks, Derek. And I also think like, um, especially with the columns, I have the ones I use the most closer or in view. So mm -hmm. then I can scatter the ones I just check in occasionally further down. Um, because the ones I interact with, I want to see daily or at the moment or whatever, but the ones that I just check in every now and again, they can be further down the line. Yeah, I, I agree with that as and well. And it's real easy, yeah. It's real easy to remove columns too. You just click there and click remove. And then you can always get the column back as well. So it, you can um, make it as busy or as, as um, slim as you want it to be. Perfect. Thank you all so much. And I'm sure we'll have more questions about this. I'm going to take your screen off for just a minute. And we're going to go on to our next question. I'm seeing a lot of positive comments about, wow, I didn't even know they were movable. So that's a huge one right there. Or um, some people are impressed with the amount of columns that you have going on, Janet. I am too. Uh, let's go on to our next question, though, which is, how does TweetDeck make your Twitter experience easier? And right. sorry, we're going to start with Sean. All right. So um, I would say one thing, as I've uh, hosted uh, quite a few different Twitter chats, the scheduling is, is amazing that, you know, scheduling all the tweets ahead of time um, so that when your chat is going on, you can actually interact with people, which is which is great. And um, I'd say the other thing is having them, the columns next to each other. So I always have the chat that I'm currently in right next to my notification chat, um, which makes it easier to kind of go off on that sidebar and have conversations as the chat's going on, but still be able to see what's going on next to it. Definitely. And Ben, if you want to add to that. Yeah, I mean, I think Sean's hit the nail right on the head there. Um, you know, it's that's exactly exactly the same as me. I mean, we I have opened the Global Gag account, uh, my personal account, and the Short and Sweet account, and and you know, depending on on the you know the virtual event we're doing or the the summit we're doing at the time, I can have open certain hashtags. So for the boot camp, it was things you know we had Global Gag as a as a hashtag. So having that open as his own column um, right next to my notifications, the same as Sean was talking about just there, uh, was great. And, you know, I, I think it's I think it's great that you can have multiple columns on different accounts. They don't all have to be on the same accounts. You can have a column, say, for your personal mentions and then have uh, mentions for your other accounts. So it could be that global gag or the short and sweet account. And you can just see an overview of all of your accounts all in one space. And I just think that's... I think that's a game changer for Twitter, and I, I love I love using it for that exact reason, seeing everything in one easy to view screen. Perfect, I agree. And Danessa, okay, so um, yeah, TweetDeck changed my world. I was on Twitter, and then Edgy Twitter happened, and you get like everyone else, you get involved in the chats and it's so much. And TweetDeck allows you to, like we talked about, separate. But I think what I think changed my world, especially if you're in a very fast um, uh, chat that goes really quickly, there's lots of participants. Um, I didn't, if you scroll down on a chat, so I, a lot of us are on the TweetDeck right now or the global GEG, 
um, and it keeps dropping down, if that makes sense. If you take your mouse and you scroll up with your mouse a little bit, you can slow it down. So you can follow the chat at your own pace instead of watching it go flip, flip, flip. And you're like, wait, where'd that go? And so you can kind of slow down the chat and read your tweets um, at one at a time. Um, that was a game changer for me because I like to read everybody's thought when you first start, of course. Um, but it's, being able to slow that down was epic for me. Yeah, that's a great tip. We're going to pass it to Janet now. So what really makes TweetDeck, uh, makes Twitter easier for me is that just I can take out the noise um, that we can easily get with social media. Um, sometimes I need to just disconnect altogether. But if I want to just focus on one thing for a while, I can just make a column for that and really block out some of the noise that I need to not focus on. And so I think that's been a big game changer for me because it's easy to get sucked into things that um, make you lose your why. <laughs> so it helps me stay focused on my why. I like that really nice way of putting it. <laughs> I love that. And then Nancy, how has it changed your experience? Yeah, I feel with Janet, there's a lot of shiny stuff out there on Twitter. Oh, look at that. Um, so the two things that I like if we ever, uh, when we get to go back to in-person conferences, one thing that I do is I rearrange my columns so that the column for the conference, I will put that right at the beginning so that that's the first thing I see. And then I may, after the conference, depending on if it's something that I think will continue and people will continue using that hashtag, I might move it over to the right or I might delete it. But during the conference, it's there front, I would say front and center, but really it's, it's left, front and left, I don't know. Um, the other thing I wanna build on what uh, Danessa was saying about how you can slow down the Twitter chat. This was something that I learned um, way back when I first started using TweetDeck um, for very busy chats, I'll have two columns for that chat right next to each other. And one of them, I'll just let it scroll so that I can kind of see where it is. And then the other column is where I'm going to be working and commenting and replying to people. But that way I can kind of get an idea of if I'm very far behind or if another question comes up and I really want to answer that question, I can see it's right there. So that way I have two columns. The first time I did it, it was a little bit confusing for the first few minutes, but then it really made things much easier. If you're in any kind of busy Twitter chat, you might give it a try and be okay with being a little confused at first. Perfect. Before we go on to the next question, we got a question from Toby. And uh, Danessa, would you mind if I share your screen? Toby is curious as to how do you add Global GEG or any other user to your tweet deck? Absolutely. So you can see my tweet deck here. So um, mine looks a little different because I like mine all the way open so I can see the words. Um, so adding, we want to add global GEG. So in the search, I do, there's two ways to do it. You can do the add column. For me, I like to do it in the search bar. So I'll do um, hashtag global GEG. And then if I press enter, it automatically adds it for me. Now it goes to the end, like we talked about earlier, but then I would go here on my giant, sorry, it's so big guys, and I can drag that uh, magnifying glass to where I want it. And then in real time, you'll see it pop up. It'll move um, my screen too. I'm gonna move it right next to my notifications. Boop, and then it'll slide all the way over. And there it is. And then if you wanna add the or, so if I were in TweetDeck too, I'm um, using the hashtag tweet deck. I can add the tweet deck. I can add an or edgy Twitter, whatever I want. Whoops. Um, so I can follow along with those. And then it updates and you're good. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely. We're going to go back to question four. What is your favorite feature in tweet deck? And we're going to start with Derek on this one. All right, all right, sorry, I had to get back over to uh, to my mute button. 
So one of the things it's been mentioned a lot of times, but my favorite things about TweetDeck is the scheduling, the ability. I used to uh, manage Utah Ed Chat, which was a state Twitter chat for Utah. Uh, that's how actually how I met Janet. We've known each other for a while for that. We share. Uh, we're one of the we're one of the few things that happen in Mountain Time. So we we're, we're, we're good pals there. But I love the scheduling because it, it allowed me to just put all my questions in scheduled, forget it completely, and then I could focus a hundred percent of my time not on oh shoot did I drop the last the latest question, but instead I'm focusing on let me respond to other people and what they're saying. And so I love that feature. I think everybody's mentioned that so far, but that's why I love it so much. The other thing I love is you can share access to an account without actually sharing the username and the password. So you can go into that, you can go into that account and you can say, hey, you click on it, you say, I wanna, I wanna give so-and-so access and you can you can control what level of access they have. And then they just get a little notification in their tweet deck and they say, yep, accept it. And they're good to go. And now they can tweet from that account. It works fabulously. Um, I used to work on the USET board, which is USET is the Utah ISTE affiliate. And I manage social media and public, public relations for them. And so that was one thing we like to do is as I was super easy to share that over and no need to really worry about the passwords, but it was a fantastic way. So those are two of my favorite things about TweetDeck. Great. Thank you, Derek and Danessa. Great. Can you show, share my screen? Do you mind? Absolutely. Awesome. So my favorite thing is the accounts. Um, like many, I co-chat, um, or co-moderate uh, California Ed Chat on Sundays. Um, so I have these different accounts. I um, help with uh, Stephanie on our GEG. So I have multiple accounts, as you can see here. Now, if I want to tweet or retweet or like, it allows me to do it from any of those accounts. Excuse me. So Derek has this, you know, hey, it's me, by the way. Um, that was coincidence. So if I want to retweet, it has all my accounts at the top. So I can switch which account. So I'll pick Geg and I'll retweet it. I can tweet when I want to tweet. I get to pick which account I'd want to be. So, you know, just type it out pick an account and go. Um, that makes life so much easier. If you've ever been on your phone and having to switch accounts, it's such a pain. This one it, it, with TweetDeck, it's just, it's almost magic. That's my favorite. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah, it makes life really easy. Mm -hmm. All right, Sean. All right, well, I'm, I'm still um, taking all that in because switching the accounts, I haven't done much with that. So that's awesome. Um, Glad we all get to learn something from this. Um, really, my favorite thing is just the fact that I can reorganize those columns. I can take them away when I don't want them. I can limit what's on the screen. So if you are um, still feeling like you're drinking from the fire hose, even with all the columns, um, just take them away. Just remove the column and then search for it again, put it in. But I always shift them over. And um, I know you can see on the uh, in the tweet deck, the little bell is like your notifications. So I always use that as my um, kind of line. Like I have the chats I'm doing, uh, currently doing, or maybe something I'm searching at the time and everything goes above that notification. So I can, that notification is always on the right side of my screen. I can see when people are commenting uh, back to me, things like that. So I always try to keep them above that notification and that makes it so much easier to know where everything's coming from. Wonderful. And Janet. I'll unmute Sorry, you. My mouse didn't want to cooperate. <laughs> um, again, my I they've already said it, but the schedule feature is is great for when you are either trying to promote things and tell your story for um, for your organization or your district because you can send out multiple things. And then um, also I run, I run, run a Twitter chat and it really helps me interact with other people when I know I don't have to worry about remembering to type out the next question. <laughs> I have it scheduled so that it works really well for that. Wonderful. And I love, I'm going to give kudos to that teacher finger. I just saw where it was like, hold on one second. Like okay. no words were necessary. That was <laughs> totally that teacher. Give me a minute. I don't need to say anything. I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Chanel, your favorite feature in TweetDeck. Awesome. So everyone said a lot of my favorites, but there was one particular one that I started using recently, and that's the filter feature where I can filter my tweets specifically if 
I'm looking for engagement. So maybe under my hashtag, I'm looking for how many times was this particular tweet retweeted? So I can put in, I'm looking for tweets under this hashtag that was retweeted at least 10 times. So all of those will come up. So it gives me a sense of how I'm interacting with people on Twitter and how they're interacting with me. Because sometimes I'm a data person and I like to know how I'm interacting and other things, how many likes did this particular thing is, um, how many replies. So you can use the engagement filter to search for things that you tweeted and how the world is interacting with you. And I kind of like that. Great, thank you. And Nancy. So what I like is that you don't have to leave TweetDeck if you want to do something, you want to follow somebody, because a lot of times when we're in these Twitter chats or you're following a hashtag, then you look and you're like, oh my gosh, I totally need to follow this person because they're tweeting such great content. I can click right in TweetDeck. I can click on their name. I can see um, the other tweets they've done and I can decide right then and there if I want to follow them, I can do all the things. So I just like that it's all in one place. Makes my life easy. That's a cool tool. Oh, that's one I haven't played with. That's really neat. All right, we are going to go on to question five. What are limitations of TweetDeck? We've talked about all the amazing components of TweetDeck, but now let's talk about some of the limitations. And Chanel, we're gonna start with you here. Awesome. So Derek mentioned it in the beginning. My biggest limitation of TweetDeck is that it is not an app, it's web-based. And you even on my phone, I will have to get on Google Chrome, type in TweetDeck, but if you're someone you know, like Nancy, who has so many columns it, <laughs> on an iPhone, it doesn't look good. And, you know, the experience is not the same. So that's a limitation for me and for how I use TweetDeck. It's not an app. Great. Yeah. Um, Sean, your limitation. Um, yeah, I'm just a really visual person. And I love the little GIF feature or GIF. Uh, we'll just, you know, whoever, whoever, whichever one you want to pick. Um, but it, it's not in TweetDeck. So you got to, so I have an entire folder of GIFs and uh, memes and everything else on my computer because I can't just access them as quickly as you can from the Twitter app. So uh, if anybody needs a folder of about 300 <laughs> GIFs, just holler. <laughs> and I just put up my favorite one on Twitter. So. <laughs> Uh, I love that. So if you need someone to follow who posts all the gifts. You know too. Yeah, the um, I agree. That's those are the two things I, I was going to say, but they were already said. So I will say that one thing is sometimes it seems like the columns aren't refreshing as quickly I was as I would like. I'm not sure if that's me. I typically have pretty good internet. Um, but could be sometimes maybe it's just that people aren't tweeting and I'm thinking, oh, there should be more. And then and then they come in. So I know it probably has to do with the way that TweetDeck fetches the tweets from Twitter. Um, just sometimes, you know, I'm not an impatient person. Well, maybe I am. Um, but yes, and I I do agree with everybody, hard G for those people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but um, yes, it is frustrating that you can't find those images. You have to save them. So good to know that you have a folder and I'll be pulling that off. So I'll be going to get that soon. Yeah, I'm seeing all the hard G's and I feel like if they wanted it to be GIF, they would have given it a J, but that's personal opinion. Um, and I know it's an acronym. So don't put all that in the comments that I don't know that. There is a question though. <laughs> um, asking if anyone would be willing to share their screen to show how to fill, to show the filter tip. We've been talking about filtering. Yeah, I, I can do it. I yeah, guess. I can walk you through. Well, if you know how to do it, I can walk you through it. Is, is yours ready to share? No. <laughs> okay, we'll go on to the well, next. I'll, I'll go ahead. I'm, I think I'm good to go. Oh, yep. You're, you're up and running. So if you, there we go. I'm going to add you. Okay. So, so, so uh, you see my home going crazy here and here's my, uh, 
Google or Edu Twitter. So when I hit the filter up here at the top, then I can search for content. So I can change these. I can exclude certain words. Um, so you can get a lot deeper in here. Uh, by default, it's going to include retweets. So if you don't want to see things twice, you can get rid of the retweets in that column. Um, you can do it by location. Um, so you can see what's being tweeted maybe around your school, in your area, things like that. Um, tweet authors, so you can put specific people within that. But you can also do this by authors as well. It doesn't have to be a hashtag. So um, I think, uh, like, I'm gonna, it's not going to correct me. I was going to put, I know we were talking about John Crippo. Um, so I can put him up here. I think it's Jay Crippo, right? Uh, but I can put a person's name up there. But um, let's see. I still have that saved. Okay. And engagement. This is, um, I believe Chanel was talking about this with how many retweets and likes. And then um, some other preferences uh, that you can throw for your column. But yeah, the, the filter option is, is great. So you can really narrow things down or expand them um, if you need to. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And then Ben also wanted to add a limitation from the last question that he has with TweetDeck. Yeah, so thanks, Becky. Um, I just wanted to yeah share one limitation I I found with TweetDeck. It's probably, it doesn't affect the functionality, but I think it's just something that a uh, bit of a personal pet peeve for me. And I think Stuart mentioned it in the chat as well. So um, it's obviously not just me, which is nice. Um, but in the messaging function, mm -hmm on there when you get up all your messages uh, in a group for example they all come through as individual messages rather than grouping together which is uh, personally really frustrating um, it's a little bit hard to follow uh, you know for me because I'm very visual as well I think it's very hard to follow if they're not all grouped together so that's probably just me being a bit picky um, but that's uh, it's great to see that Stuart has the same problem so uh, it makes me feel a little bit better about the situation that I'm not going just a little bit crazy yeah, the DMs aren't as clean, that's for sure. All right, last question, question number six. What is a pro tip you have for someone new to TweetDeck? And I think we have quite a few new people to TweetDeck in the chat. A lot of people have been posting that as they've been listening, they've finally got their TweetDeck or started. So some new tips and Sean, we're gonna start with you here. Okay, um, do you wanna go ahead and put my screen back on? Has that worked? Absolutely. Yep, I do. Okay. Um, so this, it, when uh, doing collections, uh, where you can add a column over here and you can choose to add a collection. So I have that column here and I want to put in here, I want to collect some things about TweetDeck or about this. And I can grab the four headed arrow and I can drag that into my collection. So if I want to grab some tweets and hold on to them instead of trying to filter through an entire chat later on, I can just grab those and I can drop them into uh, this column here. And then when I'm done with that, when I grab the ones I want, um, I can go back in and I can share that collection. And it gives me a few different ways to do that. I can embed it or I can... Um, view it on Twitter, or I can tweet about the collection, and it would give people a link to these tweets. So um, it's a great way if you want to uh, share some information with your teachers, like I'll grab some all on one topic, and I'll just send them to our teachers um, and keep trying to draw them into Twitter. Uh, eventually, I'll get more than more than what's there. But I, lo I love the collections. I've just started playing with it, and I think it's a really powerful tool. Great. Thank you. Danessa, your pro tip. Well, my pro tip was already talked about, so I don't want to um, take too much time, but using the filtering system, creating those columns, um, slowing down a Twitter chat, especially when they're busy. Um, like Nancy said, having the double, if you want to see where the chat it currently is versus where you are because you know some of us like to read a little more um but adding adding those i think will help and start small i think someone mentioned that too derek's smart start small 
you don't have to do it all at once, guys. <laughs> I like that tip. Yes, it's not as overwhelming that way. All right, Corey, your pro tip. Yes, of course. So we talked a lot about making columns and different ways of making these columns. Uh, what I find really beneficial is following certain individuals or uh, certain uh, handles. So it's not just the hashtags that you can you can set up for for your columns, but you can follow these handles as well, uh, which I find very beneficial. Um, I'm not sharing my screen right now, but it's it's pretty easy to do so if you just click on the user and um, uh, you can click on the mentions at the bottom. So it basically a window pops up with the uh, the user's information and at the bottom it, it says mentions. You can click on that and you can actually create that column that will follow every single mention of that uh, handle. So it's um, not just what the user is tweeting out, but what other people are tweeting about the user too, or to the user rather. Um, so I find that quite beneficial. Um, in a, in addition to that, uh, just something side note, we've talked about how it might look a little bit overwhelming and there are customizations uh, to this, um, not just uh, the benefits of dark mode, but there's uh, also you, um, changing it so you can change the width of the columns to make them bigger uh, or smaller. Uh, you can also change the text size. So while um, the screens that we've looked at might have seen a little bit compact and small, and that's again also because they're on a small window, uh, but it might have seemed a little bit much. You can actually um, unclutter this uh, by increasing the width or increasing the text size too. Great, thank you. And Derek, your pro tip. So I've, I've mentioned mine already even once or twice it's come out, but, but the idea is to start slow, don't go overboard. Um, we all have to start somewhere. And even once we're in there, you might, as you get more comfortable, you're gonna add more but the other big piece of that is don't be afraid to remove columns. I think sometimes we'll add columns and then we get going. We're like, wait, why do I still have this column? This conference ended. This is like four years old. Why is this conference still there? I know I'm not the only person that has the digital clutter, folks. I'm just saying, don't be afraid to say this conference is over. And one thing I started doing was when I'd go to USET, the USET conference, I always had the column and I would just go in and change it. So then I'd have the most current year as opposed to adding a new col new, com new column every time. So update what you have. Don't be afraid to pull stuff out. If you're no longer following something there, don't be afraid to say, okay, I've done with this for a while because guess what? You can add it back very easy. So why give yourself extra? Plus it'll your CPU will thank you later when it runs smoother because there's not so many things there. Definitely, I like that. Um, and Nancy. So wait, Derek, you're allowed to delete columns? I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, <laughs> So my advice, it's similar to what the other people were saying in start slow, but don't feel like you need, it's a little bit um, just adding to that. Don't feel like you need to understand it all right away because just like anything, when you, anything, when you start it, you're not an expert as long as you're okay with that and just say, okay, you know, you're not going to blow it up. You're not going to cause it to crash. You're not going to accidentally delete your Twitter account or follow people, unfollow people without wanting to. So just be fearless. Give it a shot and start small, but just feel like, you know what? I'm going to make mistakes. That's okay. I'm going to learn from them and move on. Perfect. And Nancy, there was a question a while ago. This kind of goes with what you were saying, asking do you t typically have Twitter open in a window next to TweetDeck, like looking at them side by side? <laughs> when I was first starting, I did. Now, um, if I'm in a Twitter chat, I will just have TweetDeck. Um, but like, you know, it's not an app. So if I'm on my phone, obviously I'll just have Twitter. I usually use one or the other. Usually if I'm on my computer, it's TweetDeck. Gotcha. Perfect. All right, and Janet. So mine is kind of, um, I don't know, it, it's silly, but for me, it was a, it was a really easy thing. Um, you know, on Twitter, once I started getting a lot of followers, I would forget to just go and look <laughs> who was, who was following me because I, I was more engaged in who I was learning from. But sometimes you get these strange people who follow you. <laughs> and so uh, I have a call, I use a column 
And it helps me to manage that and block people when I need to block them or unfollow them or, or things like that. So um, I, that is that really, I feel is like a pro tip because sometimes you just don't want people interacting with you at all. And that tweet deck allows you to do that. 100%. Yeah. Those fun messages. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I hear you. All right. That was actually the last of our panel questions. We do still have time though. Um, so in the chat, if you have any questions, please put those in there. I'm also going to uh, share my screen again. Feel free to follow any or all of us. And um, you have a panel here of eight amazing educators who have been using TweetDeck for quite some time. So I would definitely call them all experts. I learned a lot today, but uh, throw in the chat if you have any questions. If you don't have a question, I do want to know, are you team dark mode or team light mode? Because that was a big one that came up earlier. Dark mode for life. <laughs> Agreed. I go back and forth. I love dark mode, but I go back and forth. I think I go back and forth as well. I did use dark mode on, on my Mac for a long time uh, and on my phone, but my Mac's still on dark mode and my phone's now on light mode. So I'm sitting on the fence here, I think, uh, I've got to say. Light mode. I find it's easier for me to read. Maybe it's the glasses. <laughs> Interesting. So I go back and forth with mine, but uh, one thing, the question was asked to use Twitter and TweetDeck both at the same time. And I actually have usually have them both open during chats at the same time because sometimes I'll want to mention somebody, but I can't remember who they are or what their ha what their handle is. And so that's when I'd go over to Twitter and I'll use that sometimes for searching only for my own brain. Sometimes I'm a little scattered. And so that helps me to go or to check, hey, what was that hashtag we were using? I know we were using it previously. So I do have them open up simultaneously. I don't use them both all the time. But again, as was mentioned, the messaging works, I think, way better in the Twitter site or the Twitter app versus TweetDeck. Awesome. All right, we do have a few questions. I do wanna make sure we get to the audience. We had a question, is it case sensitive? So if you're putting in a hashtag or anything like that, are those case sensitive? Hashtags are not case sensitive. Yeah, just, just the uh, or, just the uh, search functions, or and, those have to be all caps. Oh, great point. Okay. So the or has, has to be. Um, how do you delete a column? There's those little eyeballs, I call them, in the corner. They kind of look like Harry Potter glasses, but broken <laughs> in the upper right-hand corner. When you click that, it gives you the option to remove. Great. Um, oh, this is like, okay. Uh, I wonder... I would pop this up. Here's the question. It says, I wonder about the time of day when people are most active with Twitter for certain chats. Anyone able to know that based on data and, or does anyone know that based on data and what you have seen? So is there a specific time of day if you're hosting a chat or trying to stay involved and up to date on all the different chats? I shared in the YouTube chat um, a list of Edgy Twitter chats and times. It's listed by each time zone. Um, I'll post it again. Um, I notice more in the early evenings. Y'all can jump in, of course. Yes, usually early evenings because most of the time these are educators and we're typically at work in the morning. And I've seen some in the um, on the weekends as well in the morning and, of course, early evening. But I've also seen some as late as eight, nine o'clock at night, depending on time zone. So oh, and there's midnight pedagogy. Don't forget that's whew, late for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you also have to look at where you are geographically because early evening for California is quite late at night on the East Coast and it's the middle of the night in, in Europe. Um, I'm an early riser, so sometimes I would go on the Aussie Ed chat because the time difference was just enough that I could get in. Um, so you kind of have to look at that too. There, I think the link that was put in with the Twitter chats gives you the idea for those that are timed mm -hmm. when they take place. Yeah, I just dropped a link in the YouTube chat. It is a site that basically has a whole bunch of education chats um, on every day of the week. Any Anything that is, as they found, they, they put them in there with the times of when they are. And what's nice is because it's based on Google Calendar, 
you can actually say, what is, here's my time zone. I'm in mountain time. So mm -hmm. what time is that actually going to be for me to actually participate? Or I'm in Eastern time and you can actually show and it will show you every, all the different chats going on every day of the week. Super useful. I will say sometimes there are things that are not totally accurate. So use that as a jumping off point and you may find some awesome Twitter chats. Would you both post your links in our private chat and we can share them out? A lot of times the links, if you try to put them in a Twitter chat, they won't actually share. So I want to make sure everyone has those. Um, there's another question. Is there a way to save specific tweets easily? Yeah, I, I think that's where the collections comes in. If you want to save specific tweets, uh, have that collection column open and drag them in. Um, like, so the other thing is you can hit the, uh, at the bottom of the tweet, there's three dots and you can, um, find different ways to share it or copy the link to the tweet, um, share it versus email, things like that. So sometimes I'll email it to myself or, um, grab the link, save it that way too. D depending on how you want to save, you can also use something like IFTTT, if this, then that. Um, and it can save your tweets to a spreadsheet, but you have to be pretty specific about what you want to save unless you want to save everything that you like, for example. Um, and then you get a pretty big list. Um, I would vote for the collection as being the easiest way. So I actually, when I, when I moderated Utah chat and I kind of helped run that, one of the things I did is I used a tool called Wakelet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And Wakelet like was a great way to kind of pull it all in, and you can search, you search by a hashtag, and then you can kind of build it in as you go, and you can do it. it's it's a super powerful tool. Um, I was using something prior to that; I can't remember what it was now, but that kind of went away, and so then I jumped over to Wakelet, and it was super helpful to pull in everything after a chat. And you can also just do it just one off, so you you go on, you can pull things, but it's it's a really really powerful tool. So if you're interested in saving tweets, I'd consider I I definitely recommend looking into Wakelet. Yeah, the other, the other, oh, no, I was going to say the other thing about Wakelet is if this doesn't work in TweetDeck, which we're talking about, but in regular Twitter, if you have the Wakelet um, Google extension, you can actually click when you're right in Twitter, you can click the Wakelet at, um, icon and it'll save right to a Wakelet that way as well. And the best thing about that as well, you, there's, oh, there's, you know, you've got the downloadable app for your phone and your, iPad and all that cool stuff as well. So you can actually do it directly from your phone and that sort of stuff as well. So you don't have to be just at a computer to say something to your wake, but you can do it from, from any device uh, that you can download the app on. So little plug for wake there, because uh, all of us seem to be talking about it, but it's really good. So <laughs> definitely check it out. Yeah, and if you're going to use that uh, with Wakelet, the nice thing is too, you can even create a um, almost like a newsletter for your school. If you're using the same hashtag for your school, um, grab them all, throw them in a wakelet, and then that way your parents don't have to be on Twitter to see what's going on in your school. Love that, the newsletter way of using it. All right, everyone, we are hitting our time. So if anyone has any last words, please share them now. I'm looking. All right, well, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Um, who is able to watch and join us today. We will save this on YouTube live so you can always come back to it and check it out. But otherwise, follow us on Twitter. Ask all these wonderful people any questions that you have. I'm sure they're happy to jump in and help. And uh, thank you to our panelists for joining. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, you so for much. having us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, I'm night. supposed to point down and tell you to please leave feedback. Uh, so go to the bit.ly. And we're going to put that link to the feedback in the comments. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yes, we are. Once you hear one, subscribe to us. Make our day. Yes, Ben's going to do our outro right now. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much, Stacey. Thank you. Stacey's in the background. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs>